Hi, my name is Mitra Wilson. I'm the California Field Manager for Roger CP Review. Welcome to the webcast. Today we're going to be talking about California 2014 licensure and why you, what you need to know for success. So let's dive right in. What is this new 2014 licensure? Well, basically, in the near future, it will be required that you have 150 semester units in order to get licensed. Who does this affect? Aspiring CPAs, just like you. And then finally, why is this happening? Well, currently, California is one of two states that is a little behind the times with the rest of the nation. Most states do require at least 150 semester units, some even a master's. Well, California is not requiring the master's, but it'll be nice to be on par with the rest of the nation. And this way, there's more reciprocity. So if you move to another state and you want to practice there in the future, it'll be much more flexible. So overall, a really great change. I want to point you to a, a web page on our website, all about 2014 licensure. It's www.rogercpareview.com slash 2014 dash CPA dash licensure. Or you can just go to our website and search for 2014 and it should just pop up. What you will find on this page is a countdown clock, today's remaining until the big change, all the different education requirements will be laid out, licensure requirements, and there's a bunch of great links you can visit that take you to the Cal CPA website, the California Board of Accountancy website, CBA, uh, great forms to use in order to keep yourself organized with figuring out where you are in the process. Definitely check it out. So let me talk a little bit about what the current licensure rules are versus what will happen in the near future. Currently, you can be licensed under two different pathways. Pathway 1 means you're licensed just locally in California. Pathway 2 means you're licensed nationally. Now with Pathway 1, all you need is your bachelor's degree and the basic 24 semester units in accounting classes and 24 semester units in business classes. Besides that, you need two years of work experience, so a little more than some of the other pathways, but as long as you have that, you're good. With Pathway 2, what you really need is only one year of work experience under a licensed CPA. However, you need 150 total semester units. Now the extra units, however, beyond your core accounting and business classes and your bachelor's degree can be in anything. You could take yoga, you can take basket weaving, whatever your heart desires, you can take. And currently, it will count. So that's the big difference. Now, in the future, come 2014, there will be no pathways. These two will be obsolete, and everyone will be stuck with the new rules. And the new rules are that you will need 150 semester units. However, the extra 30 will now be specific courses in what they call an accounting study and an ethics study. And I'll get into that in just a second. You'll need one year of work experience, and that's basically the new change. Now, I want to be clear that in order to sit for the CPA exam, all you need is the bachelor's and your core accounting and business classes. Nothing has changed with being able to actually sit for the CPA exam. So we recommend that you sit for it as soon as possible. The second you get your degree and you graduate, great time to start studying for the CPA exam. While well, all the classes that you took, all the information you soaked up is still fresh in your mind. In fact, the AICPA and NASBA have done a lot of research on this, and studies show that people who take the exam closer to when they graduated do pass at a faster rate and the first time through compared to those who wait a long time in between. So keep that in mind. You can, you can take the exam early enough, and you can always pick up the extra classes later on, maybe through a master's program, through some extra units at your local community college, whatever works best for you. Now again, for actual licensure, which generally the process takes a while, really the first big step is the CPA exam, then you can pick up the extra units and the work experience, and there are other parts to it as well, like taking an ethics exam, application process, etc. So that all will come later, 
and you will want to focus on the 20 extra units in accounting study and the 10 extra units in ethics study. So let me break those down for you. For the accounting study, six of those units can be in accounting type classes. You actually need at least a minimum of six units. So typical classes would be audit, for example, taxation, financial reporting, etc. Then you can use up to a max of 14 units in business type classes, such as business administration, business law, etc. Nine units of those under this umbrella of accounting study can be in classes related to accounting or business. And those are broken down further into three categories. First category is skills-based courses. So you can take up to three units in these skills-based courses such as English, communication, journalism, social sciences, natural sciences, classes like that. You can also use up to three units in a foreign language class or an ethnic or cultural studies class. Finally, you can do three units in what's considered a industry-based course. So maybe you took something in engineering, architecture, real estate. Those would be considered industry-based. Finally, you can have up to four units in an internship as long as it's in the accounting or business field. Moving on to the ethics study portion, you can take up to three units in an ethics and accounting course. Now, this course will be mandatory come 2017. It is not mandatory right now, but if your school does offer it, it's a great course to take. You can also take a max of 10 units in courses relating to ethics, such as professional responsibilities, fraud, HR management, organizational behavior, and business law. You can then take up to three units in a philosophy, religion, or theology class. And finally, you can take one unit in a course dedicated to financial statement auditing. Now, a lot of people are considering their masters, and generally a master's in tax, accounting, or business law will cover you for these new rules for CPA licensure. I do want to point out, though, that you have to be careful with double dipping. So if you took a class, an audit class, for example, and you want it to count in the core 24 semester accounting classes, uh, then you cannot use it in the extra 20 accounting study category. Now if that class was four units and you can use three in one area and one of the units in the other, the California Board of Accountancy is saying they're willing to be flexible with that so you want to send in all your transcripts from every school you attended to them and they will analyze for you and let you know if it qualifies or not. Now I'm going to talk about some breaking news. It's very exciting and we hope that it passes very soon. This is a legislation that was given to the government by the California Board of Accountancy. It's called SB 823 or Senate Bill 823. What it says is that if a CPA candidate is able to pass the CPA exam, all four parts, by December 31st, 2013, then they would like to extend the time to become licensed under the current pathways for two more years. So essentially, if you're able to finish the exam real soon, you may be able to do pathway one or pathway two the way it is right now until 2015. So that's really great for those people who already started the process. The bill also will allow those in a combined bachelor's and master's program to qualify for the C CPA exam a little before they get their final degree. So a lot of people are doing BMAC type programs where it's combined. As long as you can prove that you've taken enough classes in order to basically qualify for a bachelor's, then you would be able to sit for the CP exam while you're finishing up the master's portion. So that's very exciting. Now, the, pass, the bill has not passed just yet. We are hoping it'll go through in the next couple months, a little before the new year. And we're all very optimistic. The California Board of Accountancy is optimistic that it will go through 
It will really help ease the transition for many of those who already started the CPA licensure process a couple years ago and are close to finishing. Actually, back in the day, there were three pathways in California. There was a pathway zero, and something very similar happened where they were able to extend it for a certain group of people. So keep your eye out about this bill. Now, what does this mean for me? You know, if you are someone who has been planning to get licensed under the current Pathway 1 or 2 licensure, have already started the process, and your firm is encouraging you to finish up as soon as possible, then this is great motivation to get this going. Okay, if you're close to a year of obtaining your work experience already, you may want to finish the exam as soon as possible again because of this bill. Also, if you've taken a good majority of the 30 extra units under Pathway 2, or you are satisfied with staying only Pathway 1 licensed, which means just California licensed, before the changes take into effect, this again will affect you. So for those of you who are willing to take on the challenge, we highly recommend you get the CPA exam out of the way as soon as possible. You still have a testing window left, October, November. So if you've, you know, many of you have already passed a couple parts, it's very doable to get two more parts out of the way in this next testing window. What I recommend is you use our study planners. We have a great three-month study planner you can use that will break down your days day by day, which lectures to watch, how much homework you should do. You can transfer it to an Excel spreadsheet, move things around. It's fully customizable. So we offer this tool to you as a Rogers CPA Review student. Also, we have a great cram course. It, it only highlights the most highly tested topics that are covered on the CPA exam. So we recommend that you still study with our regular course. But on the side, this is a great way to boost your score if you were just five to 10 points away from passing, or you just need a nice refresher, kind of crunch for time, definitely utilize our cram course. Another option, and this is really for those who will not be able to finish licensure under the current Pathway 1 and 2 is our Roger CPA Review for Academic Credit Program. We're very excited about this. You know, many of you will have to pick up extra units to qualify for licensure in the future. And this is a great way to kill two birds with one stone. So what it is, is you can study with our course, but also earn up to six AACSB accredited units. So, very exciting. It's a faculty-led online at your pace program. Okay, an AACSB accreditation is the highest you can get, so it will most likely transfer to most programs nationwide. You can enroll at any time, so definitely check this program out. It's through California State University Chico, so it's through the Cal State University system their extended learning, and you can enroll right through our website. So again, check our website out for more information. Now, I just bombarded you with a lot of information. I know a lot of people are a little stressed out about these changes and kind of wondering, is this all worth it? Well, the answer is yes. It's very much worth it. Uh, becoming a CPA will give you prestige and respect you know, it's a very high designation to have. You should feel very accomplished for becoming a CPA. You will also get money and benefits, of course. Most public accounting firms, for example, will not promote you to senior or manager level unless you are a CPA. Oftentimes, you will get a great bonus if you pass the CPA exam within your first year of working, for example. So really great benefits that go along with becoming a certified public accountant. Career security, very important. And then finally, personal growth. You can you know, do almost anything with, with your licensure. You can ha even have your own business at one point in your own practice. And finally, as we all know, steak tastes better than ramen. So you want to become a CPA. So how do you even apply is the next question. What is the process? OK, now that you have your bachelor's degree in your core accounting and business classes, 
You will apply online to the California State Board of Accountancy through their website. It's a hundred dollar application fee. You're going to send in transcripts from every campus you attended, maybe you transferred from a junior college to a university, send in everything. Maybe it won't count for the CP exam, but it may count in the future for licensure. You will, the process does take about six to eight weeks for them to approve you, make sure you have everything ready to go. You will then receive an ATT, an authorization to test, that is good for 90 days, and within those 90 days you will choose the parts of the CP exam that you want to sit for for the next nine months. Um, so they give you 90 days to pick the parts again for the next nine months. It's a little confusing because you do have a full 18 months to complete all four parts. Um, so what we recommend is you pick, you know, maybe up to two that you know for sure you'll be able to accomplish in those nine months. And if you finish early, you can always just reapply. It's only a $50 reapplication fee. You're already in their system very easy going and you can take the other two parts. The reason you want to be careful and not sign up for all four at once is, you know, life does get in the way sometimes and if you can't sit for the exam you already paid for, the fees will be forfeited, unfortunately. So you can see all the fees here on the slide. Now once you've chosen the parts you want to sit for, you will get a notice to schedule, an NTS, that is what you will bring with you the day of your exam at the Prometrics Testing Center. Make sure that your name matches exactly the way it does on your ID on the day of your test. So that's the application process. A little bit about what the CP exam entails. It's a four-part exam. You have audit, which is four hours, FAR, four hours, regulation, three hours, and BEC, which is three hours. So it's a 14 fun-filled hour experience. Um, again, I know it sounds stressful and a little overwhelming, but the good news is you can take it part by part, and that's what we recommend. You study for a part, you take a part. You study for a part, you take a part. Now, a lot of these sections will relate to classes you already took in school, like audit, for example, would be similar to what you learned in an audit class. FAR covers a lot of intermediate accounting, leases, bonds, pensions, all that good stuff. What's great about a review course like ours is there will be many topics on here that you did not get at the university level. For example, in FAR, 20% of the exam is made up of government nonprofit. Now, it may have been an elective at your campus, maybe not, but many people don't have enough knowledge in this arena unless they work in the field. So right there, 20% of your grade is just on that topic alone. So we will make sure you are covered with absolutely everything you need to know on the CPA exam. Regulation covers all types of tax and business law topics. And then BEC is what you found in your cost accounting classes. And there's a lot of micro and macro economics as well. Now again, you have a total of 18 months to complete all these four sections. How the exam is weighed is FAR Audit and Reg is made up of 60% multiple choice questions and 40% TBSs or task-based simlets, while BEC is made up of 85% multiple choice and 15% written communication. So that's the only section that has essays. Time management is key with this exam, especially when scheduling your exam parts. So keep in mind that there are testing windows. If you were to break down the calendar year into quarters, every third month is called a blackout month. You cannot sit during this time. So March, June, September, and December are blackout months. Now many people ask us, how much time realistically will it take for me to study for the CPA exam? The AICPA, the people who create the CPA exam, they recommend three to four hundred hours. And and we believe that too. So the way our course is scheduled, structured is you will have a certain amount of time watching lectures by Roger Phillips, CPA. So here you can see FAR, for example, is made up of 33 hours of lecture time. For every hour watching a lecture, you want to spend about two to three hours on your own doing homework through the software and homework books. So there you have 99 hours 
of practicing. And then finally, the total is 132. So far is the section that tends to have the most information, people spend a lot of time on, all your intermediate classes all rolled up into one. Um, where you can see BEC requires a little less time at a total of 64 hours. Again, time management, very key, so I'm going to give you a few tips. Take time to make a weekly schedule, very important. And we have our study planners to help you out with this process. Know when you work best. Are you a morning person? Are you a late night person? Do you like a little noise in the background? Do you have to be in a library where it's completely quiet? Figure out the environment that works best for you and stick to that environment. Do the most important things first. It's all about reprioritizing on a daily basis based on what you've already accomplished. You want to limit distractions. You know, put your cell phone away. <laughs> Don't check your Facebook or emails. This is not the time to do it. This is a, a big exam. It's a very important exam in your life. So you need to just have no distractions. Finally, we recommend the Ohio method, which stands for only handle it once. If you can, just cross that off your list. You'll feel accomplished, and you'll move forward. So how do you plan time with Roger CP Review using our course? Well, our course is made up of 100 hours of lecture. They're broken down by topic. And what we suggest is you study about an hour to hour and a half of lectures at a time, per day at least. And then you want to do those two to three hours of homework on top of that. You'll want to put in double times on the weekends when you have a little more free time. And you'll want to do about one to two full days of review right before your exam date. So make sure you schedule your exam dates in advance. Now, what do you need to pass this exam? 75, that's it. Uh, so we like to joke around, C's get degrees, right? Uh, but the thing is, no one sees your score. It's not like you put it on a wall framed anywhere. So as long as you got that 75 for each section, you are good to go. And we're really here with you all the way. So I, I want to stress that we start from scratch. Roger has been teaching for 20 plus years now, all four parts of the CPA exam. He started, started his career off at Deloitte, but realized teaching was his passion. So he treats everyone equally and starts from the very beginning. He will teach, guide, and motivate you along the way. And you are not alone. If you ever have questions, you can always send them to us and we'll get back to you right away. So really, we're the only course that is efficient, effective and enjoyable. Now we have an intuitive e-learning system. How it's broken down are side-by-side -side lectures. So you'll have the lectures online and then the online textbooks, the e-textbooks, side-by-side. And there are areas to take notes. You can search through your notes. You can do video bookmarking so you can come back to a section later. All types of great tools to utilize. Here's a snapshot of what it looks like. You can see Roger lecturing on the whiteboard, going over the concepts just like you're used to in class, and our textbook on the side. You also do receive physical books and software as well. Here is a snapshot of our Homework Help Center. This is a 24-7 message board where you can ask questions, and our team of CPAs will get back to you within 24 hours. The nice thing is there is an archive area that you can search through and see what past students have asked, and you're surely to find your answer there. Talking about study management tools, <clears throat> it is critical to have proper time management, very critical to your success. So again, we have those study planners. We have a study sidekick to give you reminders along the way and remind you of your test date and course diagnostics. Here's an example of our three-month study planner. It looks a little scary, <laughs> I'll admit, but many people try and finish the exam before they start working. So if you have a nice summer break, for example, in between, you could totally do the three-month study plan. And you can see day by day, it breaks down which lecture to watch, how much homework, and which days you can take a break. Now, it's, again, fully customizable, so you can move things around 
based on your own personal schedule. Here's an example of our six month study planner. It's looking a little more doable, a little better. And we also offer a nine and 12 month suggested planner as well. Now here's a snapshot of our online course where you can use our diagnostic tools. You can gauge your understanding along the way. So if you watch a lecture and you feel like, you know, I need to come back a little later and review again, you just give that light bulb icon a couple beams and you're good. If you feel like you've totally mastered the topic, give the light bulb seven rays and you know you don't have to come back to it. So you're constantly gauging your understanding as you go, which is really nice. Um, you will also see an area that tells you exactly how much of each lecture you viewed and a countdown to your exam date. What's great about our course is it's very flexible. A lot of you are working, you're going to school, you have families, there's a lot going on. So you can study anywhere, anytime with the Roger CPA Review course. You can act, you know, access it on your iPad, iPhone, Androids, other mobile devices. You have unlimited viewings as well. And if you do need offline access, if you're having trouble getting online, maybe you're an auditor traveling around, then we can offer that to you as well. So accounting can be painless and, dare we say, enjoyable. It really can, and that's what Roger is an expert at. He has great energy. He'll, he'll keep you motivated the whole time through. Um, you know, we have to admit some of the topics are not the most exciting out there, so we don't want you to fall asleep. Again, our course is broken down into 100 hours of dynamic, focused lectures. Roger uses a lot of great mnemonics and memory aids, special ways to get the information to stick. They are topic-based lectures in bite-sized lessons. It is a classroom setting in an e-learning environment. And you will get materials written by Roger himself and our team of editors. Now, what is the national average pass rate? Many people ask. It's a 48% to pass the CPA exam the first time around. 48 doesn't sound so great. It's less than half, unfortunately but this score is going up every year. And it really includes everyone, those who took a review course, who studied hard, and those who didn't. Now we're very proud of our pass rates of 88%. This means 88 out of 100 of our students pass the first time around all four parts. And we really attribute it to our fully integrated, flexible online system and Roger's expertise. Now for those of you who are taking classes right now, you qualify for our student discount of $15.95. It's a great deal. And in fact, you qualify up to 60 days after graduation. So definitely check that out. Many of you have already started studying for the CP exam. Maybe you're taking a different review course at the moment and want to try something new. Well, we have a deal for you as well. We have our Fresh Start program where you can get our full course for $12.95 as long as you can prove that you've taken another course. And you can find all this information on our website. We also have great deals with all types of firms. You know, public accounting firms, private companies, governmental agencies. You'll see just a, a small list here of some of the ones we work with. But if you're curious if your company will cover the cost of CPA exam, and review for you, please ask your HR and recruiter and ask them about us. Finally, here's our contact information. Please give us a call anytime or email us with questions. It's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the webcast and have a nice day.